chances are you'll probably catch a snapshot at a wedding at some point in your life. And one of my favorite effects for bridal is black and white. Now, just converting to image, mode, grayscale does not make a beautiful black and white. That is a default conversion. In fact, Photoshop even tells me, hey, there's a new better way to do this. Image adjustments black and white. But I'll hit discard so we can compare a before and after. When I hit discard, I'm going to use history. And at the bottom of history, which should be up as part of your essentials workspace, you'll see create new document from current state. And when I click that, we can compare Photoshop's flat default conversion to what we're going to do. I'll come back to the bride and groom shot and I'll undo. You can use Control Z or Command Z, or I love to use history just to jump to the last step. And before I even begin correction, I'll do a few quick cleanups. I went to my rectangular marquee tool and this handicap access sign is a little distracting, so I'll select it. Use Edit Fill, Content Aware, click OK, and it's magically gone. Same thing over here, Edit Fill, still on Content Aware. I'll leave this, uh, I can try it, not sure how it will do. Ah, so magical. There's a little seam there that I could fix with the cloning stamp tool, but I'll move on with the intent of this exercise. So instead of using image adjustments, black and white, as the dialogue suggests, I want this forever editable. For that reason, I use the adjustments panel. And in the adjustments panel, you'll see what each one does by mousing over it. It gives you a description. So the one I'm looking for is black and white, the third icon in the second row. By using this button, it is a non-destructive and forever editable change to the image. So if I get my proof back from the print shop and the contrast isn't quite where I want it to be, or I've blown out my highlight detail, lost all the whites and the very delicate detail of her wedding dress, then I would be able to adjust it and I have it permanently trash that data. Anything you do under image adjustments is permanent and really not recoverable. But doing it here, I can come in and take a look at what Photoshop sees as reds, yellows, greens, cyans, blues, and magentas. We actually used to use a trick in the printing industry of going to the channels, clicking on the red channel or the green channel or the blue channel, and whichever one had the highest contrast and best detail, we would stay on that channel and then do image mode grayscale. This dialogue eliminated that little technique that we had developed. So as I slide reds left and right, because our skin tone has a lot of magenta and yellow in it, reds is really just affecting the couple's skin tone. Wow, you can completely change their ethnicity if you wanted to. Not that I would suggest that, but this is a great tool for very difficult shots. If you have mixed ethnicity and you're converting to black and white, there may be just one person who you just can't get dark enough or light enough while the other people in the shot are still well balanced. So a great technique for skin tones. I'll decide on something I'm happy with and often it helps to zoom in a little bit with command plus or control plus. I'll move the yellows. Again, our skin contains yellow, and depending on the person and their ethnicity, one person may have more than the other. So it's hitting both, but I'm seeing a little bit more in the bride's skin than I am the groom's. Then I'll move the greens. This shot didn't have a lot of green originally. Often I'll click the eye icon to hide and show, and greens should be affecting mostly the bouquet. So as I move greens, there you could see the flowers really getting pulled out so I can get bright, crisp contrast there. And then cyans and blues are going to be affecting, and I might need to hit Control-0 or Command-0 to fit in window, are going to be affecting this area of the image. Because it was a bright, sunny day, and because of the color and texture in these big granite blocks, they pick up a blue cast from the sky. 
So cyans are affecting it quite a bit. I actually like that a little bit faded. And then blues will affect the darker parts, the shadow detail there. So I'm really pulling a lot out of those stairs. And the last dial is magenta. Every shot is different, and you may need to make different adjustments, but you could see I've customized this quite a bit. Now I'll click on the Properties icon to collapse it again, and I'll choose Window, Arrange, 2-Up Vertical. Here is the original flat conversion by Photoshop. His suit isn't nearly as rich. I'm not getting all the detail I can out of her dress. Here is my corrected shot. And in fact, in this gorgeous lamp post here, I see a lot more contrast and detail. So everyone will have a different preference about how much contrast and detail they'd like, but this way you can pull whatever you want out of a photo, especially with more difficult shots that are kind of flat in color to begin with. Going to black and white produces a flat black and white. I had a good starting shot here, so I didn't have a lot of work to do. But those dials will save your bacon if given the opportunity to make a poor image far better and elegant in black and white at the same time. So try this on one of your own snapshots from a friend or family's wedding. Or if you're a high-end photographer, give this a try instead of using image mode grayscale. And also remember to use adjustment layers so I could come back next week, double-click the settings, and tune them up.